Cape Cod, Massachusetts, a snapshot of the difficult decisions facing millions in the Northeast over the coming years, and Rhode Island in particular. These extreme events are going to hit you in a more and more catastrophic way. As climate change and rising sea levels eat away at seemingly solid foundations, leaving an uncertain future. Sandy was kind of a wake-up call for many. Just the debris field, I mean, it... It was literally like a war zone. In parts of Rhode Island, the danger's already at our doorstep as homeowners risk losing ground. A federal program covers nearly two-thirds of the cost for certain homeowners in South County to elevate their houses. But with construction scheduled to begin in the next year, only a small fraction of homeowners are choosing elevation over near certain destruction. Target 12 investigator Tolly Taylor joins us now with the exclusive details. Nowhere in the state is more in the crosshairs of climate change than Charlestown, where research shows more than a quarter of all properties are at risk of flooding. After Tropical Storm Sandy hit Rhode Island in 2012, Congress approved federal funding to protect homes against future storms. In 2016, the Army Corps of Engineers launched this study to determine which houses in Westerly, Charlestown, South Kingstown, and Narragansett qualified for elevation because of flooding risk. It works like this. The federal government pays 65% of the cost to elevate a home, and homeowners who opt in pay 35%. To raise their structures a little more than a foot and a half, project estimates have homeowners paying between roughly $45,000 and $89,000, depending on house size. In Charlestown, the Army Corps identified 45 properties that qualify for elevation. They only came up with 45 properties, and we have hundreds, <laughs> well, if not thousands, that are uh, you know, potentially in harm's way. Joseph Warner has been the Charlestown building and zoning official for more than a decade. He says because so many homes in the town were built before FEMA's floodplain policies went into effect, only about half are up to code. That's especially problematic because of the town's exposure. In 2020, the nonprofit First Street Foundation, which specializes in capturing America's flood risk, found Charlestown has the greatest proportion of properties at risk of flooding anywhere in the state. The foundation's chief research officer put it this way. Going from Charlestown down to Charleston Beach, there's, just, there's, a, there's a higher density, it looks like, of properties per, for the city in that highly susceptible area to, to, to flooding. But despite the town's extreme risk, of the 45 houses that qualified for the Army Corps Elevation Program, right now only 17 homeowners are going through with the design stage. That's 38% of eligible homes. It's uh, certainly... Uh, intriguing that we didn't have more interest, um, you know, because that's that's a pretty big percentage. Target 12 tried talking to several of the qualifying homeowners to find out what factored into their decisions. Warner says in the long run, elevating a house would lead to savings on flood insurance that far surpass the initial cost of elevating. A lot of the lack of interest was the fact that people don't want to spend that much money on a place they don't feel is really worth uh, elevating. But isn't the alternative outlook for them that eventually one of these storms will whack their property and then they'll be out of house? Exactly. As a part of the study, the Army Corps of Engineers estimates Charlestown homeowners will suffer more than $47 million worth of damage between 2020 and 2070 if they do not go through with elevating their houses. Coming up at 6, we break down what flooding could look like in Charlestown. With the Target 12 investigators, I'm Tolly Taylor, 12 News. New details now in a Target 12 investigators exclusive losing ground. Research shows Charlestown has the greatest proportion of properties at risk of flooding anywhere in Rhode Island. But as we reported at five, only a fraction of homeowners are taking advantage of a government program that would cover two thirds of the cost to elevate houses. New at six, we look at how a 100 year storm would impact one coastal town. Target 12 investigator Tolly Taylor joins us now with the details. Brown professor Baylor Fox Kemper says Rhode Islanders have three choices as they face rising sea levels. Adapt and get ready, slow sea level rise by reducing emissions, or choice number three, brace for coming losses. In 2016, the Army Corps of Engineers conducted a study to determine which houses in Westerly, Charlestown, South Kingstown, and Narragansett qualified for a federal elevation project because of flooding risk. The federal government would pay 65% of the cost to elevate a home, and homeowners who opt in pay 35%.
To raise their structures a little more than a foot and a half, Project Estimates have homeowners paying between roughly $45,000 and $89,000, depending on house size. The first effects of sea level rise won't actually be this slow creeping. It'll just be an increasing frequency of the floods. Brown University professor Baylor Fox Kemper studies sea level rise and is one of the authors of this 2021 United Nations backed report, which found the Earth's climate is warming faster than previously known. These extreme events are going to hit you in a more and more catastrophic way. But with Army Corps construction scheduled to begin in the next year, only a small fraction of homeowners are choosing elevation over near certain destruction. In Charlestown, the Army Corps identified 45 properties that qualify for elevation, but only 17 homeowners have agreed to elevate. That's 38% of eligible homes. What does that say about where Rhode Islanders are with facing the coming challenges of rising sea levels? And I guess the message I would have as a scientist is that scientists are extremely certain. They should not be relying on us being wrong at this stage. Target 12 identified one Charlestown neighborhood where several homes qualified for elevation. And this is what it looks like today. If a 100-year storm hits the town, which carries a 1% chance each year, this is what it could look like for this neighborhood, with flooding reaching more than a quarter mile inland. And this is what an overhead view of Charlestown looks like today using Rhode Island Storm Tools data mapping projections, compared with how flooding would impact the entire town during a 100-year storm. Joseph Warner says some homeowners tell him when their house gets wiped out, they'll just elevate it when they rebuild. But there are some regulations out there, um, specifically with CRMC, that says if you're substantially damaged, you're in a particular area, substantially damaged, you cannot rebuild. Warner has been the building and zoning official in Charlestown since 2010. He says in the long term, people would save much more in flood insurance costs than they spend on elevating their house. And he urges homeowners to consider what they're passing down to their kids. You're passing down a very expensive property if it's not in compliance. Part of the reason it's so expensive, Charlestown's exposure. In 2020, a nonprofit found Charlestown has the greatest proportion of properties at risk of flooding anywhere in the state. A place like Charlestown is so threatened I wouldn't be surprised if the policy were to change toward if your house gets damaged, you have to abandon it. CRMC spokesperson Laura Dwyer tells me if houses in certain areas are more than 50% destroyed in a storm, they cannot be rebuilt. With the Target 12 investigators, I'm Tali Taylor, 12 News.